All right. Hi, everybody. Um, time for episode two of this little ELISP tutorial. Um, hopefully this will be a little bit shorter than the last one. Um, the plan was to do something useful in every or pretend useful um, in every video, but I don't think we'll be able to get there today because there are just a couple of fundamentals we've got to cover first. Um, so last time we, we talked about the very basics of ELIS, the idea that, you know, it's um, you have these functions and it's stuff in the parentheses and we can execute it with control X, control E, and you can see on the bottom where it gives us the result. Um, and that's uh, that was pretty straightforward and that there are tons of built-in um, built functions, uh, let's say, upcase, um, I don't know if this can work. And um, notice on the bottom, it's, well, should be with two L's here. Um, we can upcase hello, and it, uh, it turns it into uppercase. So it's just calling the built-in upcase function. Now, as it turns out, uh, we can also upcase, um, you know, upcase character, upcase word, you know, things like that, or go to the beginning, we can do upcase word and these are related to each other the idea that we have a function that we can call an elisp like this and we can have um, we can have a function that we execute um, through as an emacs command um, and we're going to get into that a little bit either today or in the next video uh, next video um, but even before that i want to talk about variables before we talk about functions. And so um, if you're familiar with another programming language, and you probably are if you're watching this, um, all languages have variables. So if you're familiar with Python or you know Java, you might say like x equals 20, and that would assign the value of 20 um, to, you know, or it would store the value 20 in some memory location and x would be used to refer to that and then later on in python let's say if we printed x it would then say oh x is a variable an identifier representing a variable oh let me look in that address of memory somewhere oh it has a 20 let me print it out and um emacs uh, elisp has kind of the same thing and so um one way we can do that is with def var and so I'm just going to, for this, I'll bring up the help. So it's control H function and bring up def var. And you'll see down here, it says it's a special form. So it's not technically a function, um, but it defines symbol as a variable. And notice that it's def var, the name of the symbol, and then you can give it a value. So I can say something like def var x 20 and run this. And then if I print print x, you'll see on the bottom it prints out x. Um, and that's pretty much it. Or I could run the identity function. Um, well, I thought there was an identity function. Um, I guess not. Oh, there is, okay. Now, maybe I misspelled it before, um, which just returns the 20 that you can see on the very bottom in the, um, you know, in the whatever interaction line there, the mini buffer there. Um, so that's a simple way of uh, creating a variable. Now, as it turns out, you, as it says here, you are not required to define a variable in order to use it. So a lot of times you'll see people using set Q. Um, so we can set Q name to be Thomas and then we can say uh, print the name and it prints out Thomas um, or going you know uh, we could say insert name and it inserts into our buffer Thomas that might be a little bit easier to see um, and then we can use set Q to change variables you know set Q X to 30 set Q name to be ratio and if we insert x 
Oh, it's 30. Because, oh, let's actually do it differently. Let's let's uh, print. I'll explain that in a minute. And we can print it. And well, it's still 20 now. Huh. Maybe I didn't execute that. Now it's 30. Uh, when I inserted it, it would try to interpret that 30 as um, as an ASCII value. So if I change this to 65, um, 65 is the ASCII value for A. So if I run this, you'll notice that it says 65, but that's an ASCII value of A. If I insert it, it inserts it as an A. Um, so there is some fluidity between integers and ASCII values and strings, and we'll get to that over time. Um, also, there are a bunch of other ways of setting up variables and modifying them and all sorts of other things, but this is fine for the basics. And once we declare a variable, under normal circumstances, that variable is going to be... Um, essentially a global variable. It can be accessed, ex, um, you can access it anywhere. Um, but sometimes you want a local variable. And so I want to show you another construct, which is a let construct. And if you're familiar with any Lisp, you'll, you'll be familiar with this. And so the way a let works is it starts with the word let, and you'll see on the bottom of it, it shows some help there, the var list and then the body. So the var list is going to be in parentheses, and it's a list of variables and value. So I could say I have an x which is 20 and a name which is Tom. And then I can say as my body I can say insert x, insert name, and if I run these um, notice I get control T or that's 20 for the x key. Let me actually do this. Let me say 97 or 98, which will be a lowercase b. So it actually, so that'll print out b tom or 98. b tom. Okay, um, because there was a little error in there before because I had nothing between it, or it wasn't an error, it meant something else. Um, so I'm declaring these variables in this let block and just to space it out a little bit so you can see what's going on. You're basically, you basically have in that first parentheses all of your variables. And then after that, you have your block of code, um, similar to the stuff you put in the indentation in Python or the squiggly braces if you were working in um, squiggly braces if you were working like in Java or C or C++. And when we run it, we run this. But here, if we now go back to insert X, Notice that that wasn't the x in that let block was just a local variable. It was just within that let. And name is still Horatio because, again, it, the let block was just that little temporary area. And if we run this again, notice that it's B Tom from that let block, but the outside is still Horatio and A for the two variables. So let is really nice, and we're going to use this a lot when we create functions, um, because, well, <laughs> uh, it lets us have these local variables. Now, there's another form that's also useful, which is you can give these without, um, without uh, without values. You can, and I'll just list these on one line for now make it a little tighter. And let's see what happens if we run this. Uh, we run this, but we get an error because we don't have, we haven't set up these names yet. But we can set them in here. We can say set Q X, let's make it 100, and let's set Q name to be Sue. And so notice here we get D, ASCII 100 is D, and we get Sue um, as the name, but if we're outside, X is still A, and the global X is still Horatio. So again, that let block, even though we're doing set Q in there, since there is an X within this little let block, um, that's what it's going to, to do. So that lets us create 
essentially local variables. So a lot of times with Emacs, when you're dealing with a lot of packages and things, there'll be variables you can set. In fact, if you just type Control H V for help on variable, describe variable, there are these tons of built-in variables, you know, for everything. So um, I mean, I don't know offhand, but well, why don't we have um, C indentation style is a variable and if you set, let's look at the help for this and you can change it to different values uh, let's see don't change this directly call C set style instead um, and this types are going to be in the C style A list okay but it turns out there are a bunch of different styles for C indentation like Kernahan and Ritchie style or um, uh, GNU style and by setting that variable your C mode will indent in a particular way um, so there are all sorts of variables in Emacs that you're going to be using all the time and you can just set them you know using set Q or other methods but when programming a lot of the time we're going to use these little blocks so that's a little example of variable so what I'm gonna do is um, I was gonna make one video on functions and variables that this is coming in at 10 minutes but I'm gonna stop this now to keep it as short snippets and um, the next video we'll just do a little bit on creating functions and then after that we'll start to put it together and for the rest of the videos we'll start building functions that do some interesting or fun things and we'll incrementally learn the language the learn elisp as we're going all right, so that's it.